All right, here we go. So <laughs> I kind of chuckle at this, but I wanted to do a video to go with these two workouts that I'm giving you um, because like I said in the post where this went up and you can see from the kind of comments from girls in our group, uh, the, giving you a single workout wouldn't do the look like you train group justice. And, um, you know, I know I uh, was supposed to put this up a little bit earlier than I did, but truth be told, I couldn't decide whether to give you an upper body day or a lower body day and pulled the group like you saw and the answers were all over the place. So I decided to do uh, both uh, a lower body day from one prior program and an upper body day from another prior program. These were not done from the same program. And just kind of walk you through um, what, what this is and make sure that you get a couple of the points. So what you end up seeing here, uh, this is in, um, I'm doing it in Loom right now, but it should be in YouTube by the time you watch this. So you can probably speed it up as you know and watch it a bit faster. So <clears throat> this will have like the programming format that we use, right? So you'll see the two days here. And I'm gonna go through this in a second. I don't have the uh, training split here because this isn't a program. This is just two totally disconnected workouts as samples. Um, but normally this would have the training split right here. So this over here is pretty standard. <clears throat> so what I would have you do and uh, this is the way I introduced uh, the program to the group, which starts in two weeks, is um, one workout at a time, doing a walkthrough, so on and so forth. But let me just back up for a second here. So below you're gonna find the programming layout for looking to train, as well as two workouts from two different prior programs, one upper, one lower, like I said. It's impossible to appreciate what LLYT and the group is all about from a single or two disconnected workouts. Oh, there's a nest that should go there. But this gives you an idea of what training over 40 should like. More importantly, what it shouldn't look like. So if you read the page um, and see how consistent my messaging is around, you have to really approach gym time with less of a calorie burning mindset, less of a fat loss mindset. Even if your goal is to lose fat, you can't approach that hour with that mindset, especially if you are in this client or uh, trainee demographic that I would be talking to. So over 40, belly fat changing, perimenopause, menopause, colorful dieting history, previous competitor, so on and so forth. It's not going to help you. It's actually contributing to why things are going in the wrong direction. If you haven't seen my uh, top five mistakes women over 40 are making that contribute to more belly fat video, DM me or something like that. I'll get you a copy of that one too. So the gym time should be approached with development more muscle, more strength, so on and so forth in mind. I have a lot of other posts about that, but ultimately that's what this represents. It's one in line with those of us who are physique enthusiasts and love the gym and like to train and, and like to look like we work out. That's the cosmetic goal. But then there's the changing health, of course, and fat loss and your changing body and actually learning to train appropriately for this season of life, which is really about stress management recovery, recuperation, uh, fatigue management, so on and so forth. Your sleep, your recovery, uh, your stress management is really going to trump your gym time and even your nutrition uh, in this season of life because the, the, the umbrella issue at the top is higher physiological stress or metabolic stress uh, in this season through horm because of hormone changes, so on and so forth, and just being more stress reactive metabolically. So everything is, in, is done with that goal in mind, including training. So the reason why you see longer rest intervals and why you shouldn't be doing metabolic conditioning, hit uh, cardio with weights, is because your system in this season is already a little bit stuck in readiness mode, stuck in fight or flight, overactivated. So Training is, of course, here to build muscle, build strength, develop your body, add some shape to your body, but it's also serving to positively impact metabolism and, when done right, positively impact the nervous system, which is where everything is caught. So your metabolism is your stress barometer, right? So short stimulation, hard sets, long intentional rest intervals where you're not doing steps between sets you know, doing little other things between sets, you're resting, you're intentionally trying to slow down the system, relax, activate the, the uh, parasympathetic 
which is the peace, rest, and digest side between sets, right? So hard sets, relax. You're also going to have more, much more muscle building stimulus with longer rest intervals. So all the rest interval research shows this, so it's not even debatable right now. Longer rest equals more development, more muscle, more strength. So this is, I say, <laughs> I've done a walk for you right here. This is what I'm doing right now. So this group, I'll say it right now, uh, my, obviously my intention is for you to join us because this is you who are watching this makes up pretty much everyone that we coach, everyone that's in our group and uh, our area of expertise. So <clears throat> these are two samples, like I said, that will hopefully entice you to consider the group. Um, we open four times a year. It's March, June, September, September, uh, and December. So right now. And um, so there's the link. Okay, so let's move on. So the walking aspect is a daily uh, part of what we do. And really what we're trying to do here is have good training programming. So we're not going into the gym guessing, just working out and not training. A lot of people work out. They go to the gym, they work out. You can work out every day and make no progress. That's what most gyms are full of. So if you're not training with a specific objective, which means you're, what you're doing in the gym has purpose and a design and an outcome expected over time to it, you're just guessing. You're just winging it. It's like eating healthy and expecting to lose fat. There's no precision there. You're just winging it. It's very amateur. So <clears throat> um, outside of that and any kind of nutrition approach you take, we, have, we, do, we give free nu nutrition templates in our group that are built for every, I think it's five or 10 pounds. Um, those are specific programming variables, right? That are for a season of change when you're trying to achieve something. You're not always going to be on a nutrition plan, but, but you will need to be on some type of one to make progress. You're not, you should always be on a training program for what I, for the reasons I just said, but ultimately you're not always going to be in a season of fat loss or trying to lose fat, right? You're going to be wanting to maintain this. That's the real goal, not the wedding day, but the marriage the time after you hit the goal. So there's a lot of lifestyle components and variables that have to be anchored in through habit, through accountability, through consistency. So that's what underwrites everything that allows good dieting, good training program to work. Because if your metabolism is saying no to fat loss, it's gonna to continue to say no until it says yes. And it's only gonna say yes by consistent behaviors that support that metabolic recovery, okay? so. Walking is paramount. You really need to see it as something that you're gonna just do forever. It is not cardio, it is not even exercise, it is not about calorie burning, it's really just about moving and activating the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the peace, the rest and digest. It's lowering stress hormones, lowering cortisol, it's improving insulin sensitivity. These are things that are going in the wrong direction over 40 into peri, into menopause. Cortisol is going up, Insulin's going down because estrogen levels are falling. So this is kind of like taking care of yourself. It's allowing um, <clears throat> good programming to work, right? So this is a lifestyle component. So obviously we know movement in that capacity. So you'll see I say walking 30 minutes here, 7K a day. So right now, my default when I start is always we're gonna walk, we're gonna try to hit 7,000, we're gonna not try, we're gonna hit 7,000 steps a day overall as a movement goal. But inside of that somewhere, there's a dedicated 30 minute recovery walk. Okay, so I just talk about it right here. <clears throat> recovery based movement. Everything is about relaxing the, the your overactivated nervous system. Metabolism is your body's stress barometer. So that gets us into stress reduction activity. Hard to just rely on this kind of stuff if you're in a, I'll do it if I feel like it mode, this is the problem. You need to have kind of systems and routine and structure that really creates a level of automaticity in yourself where you just get pulled into that direction as a default. For example, I walk every morning first thing, no matter what. If I didn't, and when I don't, the odd time I don't, it just throws me off. I'm just so pulled into that as an automatic behavior. That's what you're trying to get to with a lot of this stuff. So stress reduction activity. I end up programming here four times a week, but the message really is the harder your week is, the more you gotta carve out a little bit of time to, to close the loop, to unwind, to de-stress yourself. You have to, because this is the reason why you're accumulating belly fat is because the stress reaction in your body is going haywire and is not being closed. It's not the loop, the open loop is never being closed physiologically. Sympathetic activation, parasympathetic 
is not activating to counter. So your seesaw looks like this, right? It's out of balance, like let's say this way. So this is simply intentionally planned and something you do for you, guilt-free, even if it's just for 15 minutes. These are things that, are, that keep your stress barometer, your metabolism from being stressed out. So that's super important. Reading, taking a hot bath, going for a leisure walk, great conversation, sex, laughing, massage, naps, alone time, meditation, sauna therapy, music. It's all based on research. These are all relaxing, restorative, and help activate the parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system. This is how you start to uh, create an environment, a metabolic environment that allows good training and good nutrition, good eating to actually work. If your metabolism is stressed out, it doesn't matter how good your training is. It doesn't matter how even good your eating is. It's not going to work. So cardio, none. So there's no hit. There's no intervals. There's no metabolic conditioning works. There's none of this kind of stuff. It is not helpful at all in your case right now. So uh, I didn't say forever. Well, hit probably unlikely to be that uh, very much in your life in the future unless you're really eating for it. So from a fat loss standpoint, super unhelpful. From a metabolic restoration, metabolic healing, metabolic improvement standpoint, super unhelpful. So resist, okay? So th this sets the foundation from an exercise standpoint and from, from an overall look at that. So again, looking at this, this ideally would be every day, right? Stress management, but that's not realistic for people. But you do have to consider the fact that maybe during an easier week, you need less of it. And during a harder week, you need more of it. The problem with that is that you'd have no rhythm and no routine and no consistency. So building in some type of routine around it, uh, maybe it's different days, but you have some intentionality around doing this is really, really important as a lifestyle that allows your programming variables to actually do what they're designed to do for you. Okay. Okay, so I included, this is what we do here. So, you know, we don't wanna get hurt, right? We're all getting older. Um, you know, I'm 50 next month and mobility and flexibility and strength and muscle, these are all really important things. If you look at people as they get older, you know, it's amazing that we are focusing so much on losing fat, 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 but people get weak and lose muscle and get frail and start shuffling and falling. And, you know, we're not anywhere near that in a lot of our cases, but ultimately we're after mobility. We don't want to get hurt in the gym. We're thinking of training longevity. So longevity and avoiding injury is a big part of uh, programming as well. So this is movement preparation. This is dynamic flexibility, dynamic warmups. And ultimately, I won't read it for you here, but there's uh, seven movements for upper body, seven movements for lower body. You just flow through them, you know, do a set of 10 reps and just continue on. You can technically do these daily. They will pay monster dividends on mobility and just feeling more fluid in your body, especially as you get into your workouts. They, it, it is proactive in the context of preventing injury over time, obviously. <clears throat> and... Um, so therefore, whatever, <laughs> lost my train of thought. Okay, so I pulled a lower body workout from a previous upper lower split. So on this day, so I would have had uh, an upper body day where all upper body is being trained, a lower body day here, that's quads, hamstrings, and glutes, another upper body day. And then my second lower body day, we would have done lower body twice in this program, would have been glutes, hamstrings, quads. So here I'm hitting quads, hams first, Actually, no, I'm not. This is the, that's written wrong. That should be glutes, hams, quads. So in this one, uh, which I'll correct in a second here, and then the other one would have been quads, hamstrings, glutes to prioritize at the beginning of the workout when fuel's high and energy's high, so on and so forth. So uh, in that, in this workout, I also did what I also do when we release one day at a time is I do a walkthrough because details matter. Most people think they know more in the gym than they really do just because they've worked out or been present in the gym for time. Training is a skill. So it's like saying that you can go and play tennis because you can hit the ball over the net, even decent here and there. But if you look at tennis, I do use tennis because I have played tennis for my whole life off and on. You still get out there and practice. You're even a good tennis player who is really good at a skill or anybody who's good at a skill is still trying to be awesome and perfect and technical. You really want to go in with a training mindset. Like this is your sport for life. So uh, we do, I do a walkthrough going through the details because your setup is everything. Your arm path, your movement path, your understanding of range of motion, uh, the programming around reps, proximity to failure, tempo, which is the speed of contraction, so on and so forth. So 
in the actual program, uh, uh, in our group, there's a few videos that come out with it. One is one on training versus exercising. One is one on warm ups versus work sets, uh, tempo, and then acclimation weeks versus mastery weeks, which means just kind of the getting used to it weeks versus the crush it weeks. So the loom here is included. I won't go through it because it's already done for you. It's about 20 minutes and you'll see that's this is what goes out. I looked at it. I'm in Canada right now and I see when I did this one, I was in Florida doing this with no shirt. I'm like, ah, my outdoor office. But I won't go through all this because it's just doubling it. And then there's a little, you know, compilation of Amy running through one version of the workout um, spliced together on YouTube. So I build this out for a commercial gym because that's the the most variety and that's just where the program should be built from and and but exercises in proper programming are really selected last and you're ch you're choosing the loading parameters the sets and the reps the tempo the rest intervals first and then plugging in exercises that really fit you know that's how i do it anyways and um <clears throat> so we have a lot of people that train at home, but honestly, the more limited you are at home, the more limited you are, period. You know, so the minimum that we say is a, a adjustable bench, dumbbells that are, uh, you have heavy enough to allow you to get stronger on everything over time, because you will, and bands of various tensions. Now, that's, that's still, that's the bare minimum. That's limited. So bands are going to sub for cable work, but not well, because how do you get strong on bands? How do you track your progress, right? But it is what it is. Um, you really kind of lose out on things like leg extensions and leg curls at home. And you have to have access to, you have to be able to do leg curl and leg extension because there's muscles that aren't hit unless you do those two exercises. So bands or cables at home can be done in, in lieu of that. Um, but <clears throat> so for example here, uh, I'll quickly go through this calf press and a leg press. You know, at home you would do this off a step with a dumbbell, a CAS glute bridge. You could do a barbell glute bridge, a hip thrust. You could do this single leg with a dumbbell at home. Uh, this can be done very straightforward if you have dumbbells and a band. This can be done with bands, glute, uh, glute abduct, uh, abduction, sorry. Seated leg curls, this can be a single leg cable or banded uh, exercise at home if you're at home. Quad bias leg press, so you're not gonna have this at home, right? So this is really any quad bias squat pattern movement. So you could barbell squat here with your heels elevated to uh, to uh, allow for good depth. You could dumbbell squat here. Um, you could do a single leg Bulgarian split squat or a front foot elevated or a front heel elevated split squat. The point here is you're really trying to hit the quad. So listen to my walkthrough as I go through this workout for my group in the past and you'll get all of my cues for this one right here to see kind of what we do and how I introduce it. And then this one is an optional short step lunges or walking got knee issues you can do a reverse lunge there's no decelerative forces there because you're stepping back and not stepping forward and then decelerating so there you go so that's the leg day now we would push this we use an app as well and you really want to when you look at this it's new right so if you were to be let's say using this workout um or any new workout you really shouldn't be you know, really into it until probably week three or four. And most people are changing their workouts way too often and not realizing that your muscles require repetition and progress through certain exercises over time. If you're doing random stuff all over, the, how do you actually make any progress? How do you even track progress? How do you even compete for progress or data log it? So, you know, in the app we use to push the workouts through, you log them and you compete with yourself because you are going to get stronger and that is your objective. You want to be training hard, taking once we're into the mastery phase and through the acclimation phase, which again is the first two weeks where you're, you're just getting used to the flow of the program. You're finding your way around the gym. You're figuring out your weights. Your brain's really involved in the first week or two of a new program. But then you start to find your rhythm, find your routine, you know, check here and there. But now your, your brain is out and your body is more connected and now you just work the program and look to get stronger over time, continue to optimize your technique, your, your follow through, so on and so forth. So, <clears throat> so I wouldn't, you know, you're not gonna go into this and just crush it, right? You wouldn't, I mean, you could, if you're doing it as a standalone, I'm just gonna try it out and know there's no programming here, then yeah, hammer it. 
Um, otherwise, if this was you know day one, week one in our group, we'd say, hey, you're gonna take everything no closer than three reps short of failure. Leave reps in the tank. New things cause soreness, um, so on and so forth. You get a training effect for submaximal loads, etc. Okay. So the other day I gave you was an upper body day. So this is from a body part split from last year. Um, so this one was from like June of this year and this one was from June of last year. And I didn't have the, uh, we didn't include them in the PDF in the document when we sent them out. So I don't have one. So I'll walk this one a little bit through quickly, but you'll see all these are hyperlinked videos, by the way, right? So these are all hyperlinked um, clips, 15 second clips. And then in the group, you'll see that, for example, I might do a you know three or four minute walkthrough with Amy on Kaz Glute Bridge, really detailing the movement. Definitely did one for here, did, did one for this, um, so on and so forth. So there's education around that because the better you get at training, like think about it, the better you get at hitting forehands, the better your ball is, the more you win when you play tennis, the better you get at anything, the better the result, the more fun, the more results, so on and so forth. So it's the same thing as this. The details matter. You're looking to train your muscles, apply good, solid tension to those muscles, which is not just lifting weights or going to the gym and working out. Just showing up is great, but that's working out. It's healthy, but it's not necessarily conducive to making progress in the area of uh, trying to achieve something, looking like you train, healing metabolism, so on and so forth. So <clears throat> I can't remember exactly what the split was, but this was, we had one leg day here and then three other days. So you'll see shoulders, lats, and triceps. So I had split I had split back in this program into back, so upper back rowing type muscles, teres, rhomboids, mid traps, things like that, and lats, which are your width muscles, your taper muscles on two different days. So cable laterals, low pulley, um, seated dumbbell press, a front uh, side raise hybrid. Uh, with, this is a superset with a Bradford press. Um, again, no point in explaining these except for just to, uh, you'll see it through the video. Incline one-arm dumbbell rows, motorcycle rows. There might be a couple of new movements here for you. Motorcycle rows is a favorite. I actually just polled my group. I said, hey, what movement would you like to see next month and what movement would you not? And motorcycle rows popped up quite a bit. So that's an excellent lat exercise. Cross-body cable tricep extensions. That's the goat of tricep movements and PJR pullovers. So. Let me just talk you through this one. So cable laterals, this tempo 4011, what it really means is slow negatives, really slow negatives. Then you raise the weight, pause at the top, and then back down you go. So first set's 10 reps, second set's eight reps, third set's eight reps, rest intervals 90 seconds between the 10 and the eight, and then two and a half minutes between the eight and the eight, right? Because we want, these are warm ups, and then before your last set, your last set is your main set. That's your money set. So that's the set when you're through acclimation and more into the hard training weeks, you're taking to failure or close to failure. So before that set, you want the longest rest. You don't want your nervous system fatigue to get to create an interference effect with your ability to generate as much power as possible on that work set. You gotta get to the point where you can train hard, hold really good form near technical failure on a set kind of like you know think of a race car an f1 driver the faster they go the more in control they are same idea so you want to get to that point where you're so technically proficient and then you can really load in that technical proficiency but you're always thinking that way you're training you're not just working out you're focused you're concentrating um next exercise see the dumbbell press so the oh let me just go back here um I'm talking fast because I, I, I know this is going to be long, <clears throat> but those of you that are serious will, uh, will, are really who I'm talking to. Those of you that aren't, then you'll just won't even probably be at this point in the video. So the pause is in the contraction on cable laterals. Laterals are always to be done in the scapular plane, about 30 degrees in front, so not straight out to the side. Let the scapula move naturally. Think of reaching out to the side, but 30 degrees in front. So it's between a side and front raise, but more towards the side. The line of the cable or bands should be parallel to your arm path. Substitutions, dumbbells, or bands if you don't have cables. Cable laterals can be hard uh, depending on the pulley you have access to because they're so freaking heavy and that's such a weak, weak uh, exercise anyways. Whoever gets strong on laterals, nobody. 
So <clears throat> keep that in mind. Then we do seated dumbbell press. So this is, if you're in a gym, you could do a machine shoulder press as well here. Um, but bench position should be high incline, not vertical. This is a mistake that people make as well. So people are sitting vertical and they're also pressing with their, sh with their arms really out wide here. So similar to the laterals, you want to be in what's called a scapular plane, which means you're going to be somewhat tucked. You're also going to scoot your butt forward. So you're really sitting like this and then your elbows are tucked and then you're pressing this way. You're not sitting this way. Okay. So bench position to be high incline, not vertical, scapular plane. Your elbows are not flared to the side. They're tucked a bit forward. With dumbbells, this means your grip will be more neutral. Scoot your butt slightly forward in the seat to line up front delt fibers right. Okay, 10, 8, 6. So warm up, take a rest, heavier weight for 8, and then long rest, 3 minutes, and then a, your big money set for 6. <clears throat> then we have a super set for shoulders. So this is a front, right, front, that's twice I've dummied that one up. Front side raise hybrid, super setted pretty much right into a Bradford press. So alternate laterals with front raises, one of each counting as one rep. Laterals again are in the scapular plane. That's 30 degrees in front. Now you know that one. There's a quiz at the end. With front raises, watch the arm path in the video, right? So just watch and copy. The dumbbells are moving not just up, but out in arm path. Front delt fibers are on this angle. So that's the arm path that that exercise is going to go through as well. This means laterals, you're not coming all the way down. 90 seconds rest and then back. So it's C1 right into C2, take a rest, C1 right into C2, and then we're done. Um, shoulders. <clears throat> shoulders were hit another time this week as well. On Monday, that's right, we did chest, back, uh, middle delts, so laterals, so this part, the cap, that roundness part of the shoulder muscle, and biceps on Monday. This was this here was Thursday's workout. Okay, then we move into to some lat work. D. So this is a great exercise. One of the things about gr good like uh, movements for muscle building, they're stability movements. So this is why machines can be so great uh, because you don't have the stabilizing requirement or chest supported back work, chest supported rowing versus bent over rowing, uh, you know, a Bulgarian squat versus a hack squat. There's, there's stable movements. The machine has the stability so your body doesn't have to share neural drive, force production between balance and stability and push, right? On a machine, more of it goes to push, less of it goes to balance and the coordination effect of keeping everything stable and in place like you would even on a front squat or a back squat. You have more stability required, more bracing, more core activation, more shared neural drive, and then more perception of difficulty as well. So <clears throat> incline one arm dumbbell rolls are a great move because you're stable on a bench. Um, so set the bench at 30 to 45 degrees, either hold onto the bench with one hand for stability or put your non-working hand on a dumbbell on the floor, stacked vertically uh, or positioned vertically for stability. That's how I do it. Uh, don't pull straight up. Let the lat naturally lengthen, lengthen that extension and then row back towards your hip. You're not going to have a lot of scapular retraction here because the lats don't do that, but you're going to aim that elbow towards the hip. If your elbow ends up too far above the line of your back, you are off. Pull from your back, not your hands. Think of your hands as just hooks. So, and then uh, motorcycle rows. So this is a uh, cable movement. You can do these with bands as well. You're gonna use a neutral grip. Lat work is always neutral grip or underhand grip, but neutral grip typically is your strong grip, but it's also lats. Upper back stuff is most often this grip because it affects the elbow, the arm path, of the exercise. So with lat work, we want an elbows tight as opposed to elbows flared arm path. So neutral grip is going to provide that. So neutral grip, hinge at the waist, sit back into the movement to counterbalance the weight, brace your abs for stability and row towards your hips. Another key with lat training, don't arch, right? So you have to keep an abdominal brace in your core to prevent that arch and maintain a neutral spine. So that means like suck your belly in and, you know, hold it as if someone's going to, uh, punch you, you know, you will prevent the arch and have a lot of lumbar stability there. So row towards your hips again, again, with lat work, you're not pulling behind you. You're aiming down towards your hips. There should be no scapular retraction. Think of driving your elbows towards your hips. Substitution here, bands. And then we finish with some triceps. This is, um, 
These are paired exercises, but with full rest between them. So they're not supersetted, right? We want full rest. So it's cross body tricep extensions, full rest, PGR pullover, pullovers, full rest, and then back. We do that three times. So this is basically a contraction movement or a shortened movement, and then a lengthened movement for the triceps or a stretch movement. So set the cable height so the cable will be in line with your arm, create tension in the upper back to fix the shoulder joint into place. Don't keep the elbows tucked. That's actually incorrect, even though it's been preached in our industry for years and years and years. Let them flare and line up with the cables as you see in the video, lock them out hard. So video will be the best way for you to see what this actually looks like. And then F2 is um, let the shoulders go into 180 degrees of flexion. So that just means let them go, those upper arms go right back into stretch, then drop the dumbbell straight down and you'll feel a huge stretch in the triceps. This then initiate into the lifting part of the rep is done through just the typical tricep mechanics of extending your elbow until completion. So there you go. So those are two days for you to give a shot. Um, you see, uh, you won't be able to obviously max out what these workouts can do because they're isolated and not, not part of a program, but you can at least get an idea if you end up not joining our group, um, what it should look like. You know, there's things in place here. There's big compound work. There's rest intervals. We're training heavy. We have really good control around our reps. The notes tell us, you know, we've got to be pretty detailed around what we're doing here if we're trying to target what we're targeting, right? We're trying to grow certain muscles, make certain muscles stronger, so on and so forth. So I'm going to wrap it up here and um, hope you enjoy it. And hopefully we'll see you in our December round. Have fun. And if you didn't get a copy of that top five mistakes video um, that women over 40 are making that contribute to more belly fat, hit me with a DM. I'll send you that one as well.